You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 65. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome to another edition of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm thrilled that you're here, so thanks for tuning in. Today's topic is one of my favorites. We are talking about your about page, and we're getting very specific. I'm gonna help you break it down, and hopefully by the end of this podcast, you are excited to dive into your about page and make it even better. Now, my guest today is a true modern Renaissance woman, Melissa Casera is known in her hometown of Los Angeles as a screenwriter, an actress, and a publicity expert who can take anyone's book, website, or platform and get it on TV. But if you don't live in Hollywood, you might know her through her website, melissacasera.com, the world's most addictive site to get publicity and sales. Her blog is filled with not just marketing advice, but personality. This girl is so funny, and once you start reading, you just cannot stop. Now, also, Melissa is someone that truly practices what she preaches. So you can tell she knows what she's talking about in regard to marketing because she's really fantastic at marketing herself, which is always a good telltale sign. Today, I'm going to talk about a very important aspect of marketing with Melissa. As I mentioned, your about page on your website. Now, it may seem like an afterthought sometimes. Maybe you've put down a few vital details like your name and your education, a little information about what you do, and maybe you thought, I'll just fill it in later when I get more time. Or maybe you're dreading working on your about page because you just don't like writing and you sure as heck don't want to sit there and brag all about yourself. I know how that feels, but we've got to put some attention to that about page. Did you know that your about page is getting tons of visits when people visit your website? Sometimes it's the most visited page on your website. You gotta make it good. And there's some tips and tricks to really optimize that space. And that is what we're talking about today. Now, Melissa put together our free giveaway for today. And like everything she does, it is really fabulous. You're going to love it. It's called Craft a Crazy Impressive About Page. And not only is it going to help you a ton, it's super fun to use. It's like plain Mad Libs. Do you remember Mad Libs back in the day? If you're super young, you won't. But basically, it's a fun way to fill in the blanks of every section for your about page. And once you do this, you actually have something of great value to put on your website. So it's a template that you get to fill in. So you can get this at amyporterfield.com forward slash 65 download, or you can text the phrase 65 download to the number 33 Four, four, four. You're going to love this free giveaway on this episode. And thank you, Melissa, so much for creating it for us. It is so well done. I cannot wait for you all to jump in. Now, before I bring Melissa on, as always, this episode is brought to you by Lead Pages, my favorite tool of choice that helps me grow my email list every single day. One of the features I'm loving the most right now is the pop up box that I can put inside my blog post. Now, you can also use Lead Pages to put pop-up boxes inside your about page so you can be getting leads when people are reading your about page. I'll mention that when we get into the interview with Melissa. But if you wanna learn more about my favorite tool of all time, lead pages, I created a special workshop for you. It's called the four steps you need to know to quickly grow your list without spending all of your time on marketing. So you can go to amyporterfield.com forward slash new leads and get access to it right away. It's extremely valuable. I can't wait till you dive in. Okay, so I won't make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and bring on Melissa. Melissa, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to have you because you have been mentioned on my podcast before, and I'm absolutely in love with your about page. And I got really excited when I thought, wait a second, we can dissect this. We can get this girl on the show and talk about how she did it. So this is going to be a really action-packed podcast and we have so much prepared for it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay. Okay. So the first question I have for you is what makes the about page so important? Mm, So 
Your about page, if you, and I like to correlate everything with Hollywood, just so everyone knows. Which is a lot of fun. <laughs> You're going to hear a lot of Hollywood speak. Um, so I like to think of an about page as what you would wear on the red carpet. So think like Emmys, Oscars, Tonys, Grammys. It's something that should make you feel completely amazing, but also show off your best assets. And that way people are completely clamoring for your attention. Well, and you it can't go wrong be, with that. Absolutely. It should totally be tasteful, right? But then it should also be playful. It should show off your personality in some way. Um, it needs to be impressive, of course, and stack up your credentials, but not too buttoned up so that it bores people to tears. And it should leave people excited, and I like to use the word dazzled, but also wanting more. So you don't want the about page just to be this complete thing and then it's done. You want them to be like salivating for more of you. Okay. So the exciting thing about this show is we're going to make it really actionable for everybody listening. So when you finish this episode, you are going to want to run off and either rewrite your entire about page or at least tweak it in some areas to make it even better. Now, can you explain the difference between the 25 word bio, the 75 word bio and the 150 word bio? You mentioned these in what are each of them and what's the common thread that needs to be in all of them? Yes, absolutely. So your 25, and this is, you do need to have multiple bios and then your about page is also kind of separate from that. <laughs> so oh, it, whoa. Okay. Yes. So if you think about it, there's actually four different things that you should have. Um, so that sounds like a lot, but I promise that there's like these common threads and they all sort of build upon one another. So it makes it really easy. So a 25 word bio is basically just your intro. So that's when, let's say you're at a cocktail party, networking event, um, or even just like talking to someone on the phone and they say, what do you do? What do you say? So some people call that an elevator pitch. I think that's super boring. So I call it. Oh, 25. no. What do you call it? I call it the cocktail mini. I like it. Okay. <laughs> so that it just sounds more fun. And essentially, you know, where you're coming with that is you're just saying, you know, hi, I'm Melissa or hi, I'm Amy. And then you're telling them how you serve. So instead of like rattling off a bunch of boring titles, um, and in some cases, our titles are really confusing to people, especially if they're not like in our target market. So when you say, you know, I like to help people or serve people or teach people to do this or that, it makes a lot more sense. So that's that. The 75 word bio that's what is called a byline. Um, some of you may be familiar with that. Some of you may not. It's actually a term that's used quite often in the press. So in magazines, um, newspapers, you know, television, et cetera. A byline is essentially just a, a mini descriptor of who you are. If you've ever guest blogged before, mm -hmm. um, you're, you've probably put together a byline. Okay. So a byline is essentially talking about yourself in the third person. So you wouldn't say, hi, I'm Melissa. You know, you might say instead, like, Melissa Casera is a PR expert, blah, blah, blah. And the, really the key element of that is just sort of twisting what would be your 25 word into something that's written in a third person, still talking about how you serve your audience, though. So again, not rattling off boring titles, but just saying, you know, she serves by doing this or she helps the world by and then having some kind of clear call to action there because a byline is supposed to be for an external source. So that wouldn't go on your website. That would be externally driving people back to your website. Okay. So in that case, you have to have a super clear call to action. Please do not miss that. Usually for your opt-in, sometimes it could be to buy or purchase something. I say it's better to, to send them to your opt-in so they get on your list and get to know you for a little while. So that's the byline. And then the 150 word story, again, this is something that will then move into your about page. So your 150 word story is just a little bit more details about you. So it would kind of build upon your byline and 25 word intro. So how you like to serve the world and where they can find you. But it will also include a few other details. So a couple personal things about you, maybe things about your family or your hobbies, maybe some fun facts about you and maybe have a few extra credentials that are stacked in there as well. So it's just sort of a built out bio. And that's useful for people that ask you for a longer bio. 
So if somebody says, you know, we want something that's like 150, 200 words, that's the perfect one. That's what you'll use. Now an about page, (laughs) I feel like there's a lot going on here, Um, but the about page, the difference with that is that the about page is the thing that goes on your own website. Okay. So this is when people are like clicking around and they're like, okay, this gal or guy looks really cool. How can I learn more about them? So when they go to your about page, that's where they have the opportunity to learn more about you. So your about page is kind of comprising all of those things I just talked about. Specifically, though, I would say it's closest to the 150 word story, except you should really write your about page in first person. Oh, the only time, okay. yeah, the only time that's going to be different, and and actually, there this is just a, a mini tweak is if you have a larger company where you're not at the helm of it. And what I mean by that is, you know, you're your own brand. So you're Amy Porterfield, right? I'm my own brand, Melissa Casera. But some people create companies that are not about them. So let's say, you know, your company is Toyota. Well, that's not about one specific person. So in that case, there may be kind of this more generic company bio, but then there would be the bios for the key leaders or for the executives. And again, those should be more personalized. I don't know if Toyota does that, but that's my opinion on it. So, (laughs) so for us, especially if you're an expert, and I think a lot of your audience is where they're teachers or coaches or consultants, right? And your brand depends on you. You really need to personalize that section. Super important. When someone lands on your about page, it should feel like they're meeting you in person and shaking your hand. So you never want to talk about yourself in third person because that's going to (laughs) come off rather strange. A little awkward. A little awkward, right? So what we can go through, I'm sure we're going to do that coming up, is going through some of the key components of that about page and how to build that out specifically for your audience. But that's the the essence that they should get. They should feel like they're in the room with you, talking to you in person, and you're just telling them about yourself in a really compelling and interesting way. Okay. So first of all, I love this idea of the 25 word, 75 word and 150 word, because these are the things that people are asking for constantly. If you're guest blog posting, if you're speaking somewhere, if you're doing this or that, and it's so nice to have those written and then put them somewhere. I'm a stickler for systems and processes in Dropbox, but put them somewhere where you can do a quick cut and paste. And if you have a small team, your team should be able to access those at any time. And this is something that I didn't do in the very beginning. And I was always scrambling for those little bites about what I do and who I am. And it's just so nice to have it done and a cut and paste kind of thing. So I love that you have that you have your clients do something like that. Now, my question is, let's talk about this about page even more. What's the North Star for someone creating their about page? You know, what should be guiding them through the process? Yes, absolutely. So as far as the North Star, always think about how you serve the world. So I think a lot of times we get caught up when writing about pages or bios, thinking about like, okay, what's my title that everyone's going to know, right? Like, should I use marketing expert or branding expert or health coach, right? And I see a lot of people get so stuck into that as opposed to looking at your why for your business, right? So thinking about like why you do what you do, how you serve the world. You really want to paint a picture of the world or the society or the lifestyle that you're trying to create through your business. So I can give you you like a more tangible example here and I'll use your bio as the example. So on your bio or on your about page, you could say, you know, Amy Porterfield is a Facebook expert that helps people to do better with social media. Right. Right. So now, great. Like everybody would be like, okay, snooze, right? That's super (laughs) boring. They're going to die of boredom. Instead, you don't talk about that in the beginning, right? You don't open with that. Instead, you open with helping people craft a life that they love out of what they do. So I think that's like your opening sentence or at least opening paragraph. 
that's really important that you did that, right? Because that is your mission. That is the picture you're painting of a better world for them and a better society and a better life and business. And so that's the North Star. That's what you want to think about okay. is how you serve. Now I have as a download, I'm sure you're going to mention this as well, but I, I provided you guys with a template that will accompany this. And in the template, I have a whole bunch of little like zingers and things that can help you figure out what that is. I would also say if you're completely lost about what your why or your movement is in the world, make sure to read the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Ooh, that's, that's a, a good really, one. really good one. Yes. Okay. I really, love really that. Good. Okay, so you mentioned the giveaway, the PDF giveaway that we have for this episode. And I want to talk about that because you created a post, Build a Better Bio. Mm -hmm. And it's like creating an about page with Mad Libs, which if anybody, do you think Mad Libs is just a certain time, like the youngins listening would have no idea what that was? <laughs> Possibly. Because <laughs> this is where I start feeling a little old, but we loved Mad Libs. And so for those of you who don't know what, what it is, it's basically a story and you get to fill in the blanks. And then it usually turns out pretty funny once you fill in all the blanks. Now you've created a template basically that people can use like a Mad Lib style template and create their about page. So that is the giveaway. You can get it at amyporterfield.com forward slash 65 download. So amyporterfield.com forward slash 65 download. But let's break it down here. Let's make it really actionable. And can you walk us through the key components of an about page? So you have it set up, like I said, where people can fill in the blanks. But can you tell us what's important about each of those blanks that you're going to walk us through in the template? Absolutely. So the first section is kind of just going to spiral off our discussion that we just had, where you need to have this personalized introduction. So it should feel like a handshake. It should feel like they're in the room with you. You don't want to talk about, hey, I'm Amy, the Facebook expert. You want to talk about how you serve people, because this gives a people a reason to care about you. And this is what you need to create true obsession from your audience. So this is what's going to tick them to say, ooh, I really want to know more about this gal. I really want to know more about this guy because she's hitting an emotional trigger point in me to make me excited to want to work with her, learn more about her or him. So that's the first section is that instead of just kind of rattling off your titles or the things that you've accomplished, you want to start with how you love to serve the world. So just like Amy does in her bio, where she helps you craft a life you love out of what you do, in my bio, it's about running your business that feels like a guilty pleasure for you and for your audience, right? So that's my why, is that there's lots of pleasure baked in. So you want to start and kind of kick off with that. Again, that'll be in the template to, to help you figure that out. And then if you need to go deeper, if you're totally lost on that, read Simon Sinek's book, highly recommend it. Now, the second section of your bio, or I'm sorry, your about page, will be about your credentials. Because we do need to share with people what our accolades are, the things that we've stacked up. Maybe it's things we've accomplished rather through education or um, just through our company or awards or you know, other notable things that have happened. Now, it's important to do that because you have to have some kind of credibility with your audience. So if you have no credibility, then after you talk about how you serve the world, they might just check out, right? So right. now is your time to impress them, <laughs> right? Now you want to get them to stick around. So you want to impress them with some things that you've accomplished. Now, if you're just starting out with your business, you know, don't worry that you don't have 10 years of experience or that you haven't won, you know, a boatload of awards. There are some things that you can think about and think through your business, and then you can always sort of turn them into magazine headline worthy bullet points. So you can make them, I don't want to say like trump up your expertise, but you can write them in a way that feels really fun and doesn't just sound like you're rattling off a list that's super boring to consume. So some things that you can include are potentially, you know, number of years you've been in business, if that is the case for you. So if you have been in business, even if you worked in like the corporate world and transitioned into entrepreneurship, 
that matters, right? I mean, the fact that maybe you've had, let's say you're in marketing and you worked in marketing for 10 years in corporate and, you know, you're only in year one of your business. Well, that still means something, right? All of those years that you've accrued are really important for people so they can see proven experience and longevity. So if that's your, if that's your case, then definitely include that. Impressive clients and companies that you've worked with or even number of people you've served. So in some cases, you know, some of us have worked with large companies that are recognizable. And if you can, if you're allowed to legally mention their name, that's a great place to do it. If not, you know, why not kind of think about the the large number of people that you've served? And that doesn't need to be clients. That could also be audience. So let's say, you know, let's say you only have one class and you've only taught a hundred people, right? Or like you've only had a hundred clients or even 20 clients, but your list has 3000 people on it, right? So you can mention that you can say, you know, I regularly serve 3000 plus people with the following advice. So think about like the total number of your community. And that's what I mean about spinning magazine headline worthy bullet points here is like thinking about those kind of terms. Like how many people are you serving when you combine your newsletter list and social media followers? That's going to look like an impressive number. And it's true because all of those people are on your list and they follow you, right? So you just want to write it in a way that feels really exciting and impressive. You can also list any press mentions. So if you've been on a top blog, maybe you've guest blogged somewhere, or if you've been featured in a magazine or on television or on the radio, you know, again, this is a great place to mention that those types of things add a lot of credibility, third party endorsement as well. Because if you've been featured in one of those places, that means that person thought you rocked and that's why they featured you. So that is a really beautiful ticker for third party endorsement. And then lastly, You could mention some client success stories if that's relevant. Now, I don't mean weave in like testimonials unless you maybe could say something like, you know, my clients often call me the Olivia Pope of PR, Ooh, right? That's so good. For, right. So, <laughs> so, so I get that a lot from my clients. So I might say that. I don't, I don't think I have that on my about page now, but I might use that, right? Because that's really fun. Yeah. So if you, if you get that kind of thing from your clients quite often where they're like, oh my God, you're like Mother Teresa, <laughs> right? Or like, you're amazing. Then you might want to put that there. My clients regularly call me this. So That's a really fun one to do. So between those four things, you should have enough to be able to stack up some credentials in that section and make them feel exciting. One really quick thing, though, before we move on to the next section that's super important is that please make sure whatever credentials you post are understandable by your ideal clients. I see this a lot. (laughs) So, so for example, I'll have a, I'll have clients that'll post, you know, I won the Harold J. Thompson, the (laughs) third award for excellence. And you're like, what the hell is that? Like, and to them, it means something because they know what it means, but their clients are like, I, you know, whatever. So if that's the case and you won the Harold J. Thompson, the (laughs) third award for excellence, um, what you would say is you can say that you won that, but then add a little ticker on the end of that to say, which is basically the Academy Award for health coaches, right? So like gotcha. explain to your audience what that means in your industry. Don't assume that they're going to know what that is. So that's an important one. Also with like titles. So I have a lot of clients that have like lots of educational credentials and they'll do that same thing. And I'm like, that's great. But if you're going to write that, you need to explain what that credential means. You know, it's basically like I went to the Harvard of health coaching schools or, you know, you have to say what that is so people understand. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Are you ready for the next (laughs) section? (laughs) I I didn't want to say anything because I thought you're going right for it. Yes. What's that next section? Awesome. So the next section now, now we're getting out of like all of our businessy stuff and we're moving into what we do when we're actually not working. <laughs> Which so, I think this is the part that sells. I this feel like totally this totally sells. Yeah. So, so because this is about giving your audience a glimpse into who you are as an actual person in the world and not just a business owner. So this is where you can talk about, maybe you talk about family or travel or hobbies or like quirky side passions or whatever that, you know, looks like for you. 
This is so important, not only because it makes an emotional connection with people and it, and it allows them to get to know you on a more personal level, but it also sets you apart from the competition. This section alone. And I think one of the top questions I get is like, how do I differentiate myself from the competition? And I often feel like it's so easy because if you just show off your personality and give people a glimpse into who you are, no one has that same personality makeup as you. No one in the world is going to have the same exact credentials and family life and hobbies and quirky side passions and personalities as you. So that's how you stand apart. This is the easiest thing you can do is just beef up this section. And that's how you can differentiate from other people that sell similar products and services, let's say, but they don't have that same lifestyle makeup as you. And this is also important because It allows you an opportunity to present a really accurate depiction of what your lifestyle is. So for example, going back to that beginning part where I said you have to talk about how you serve people, that's how we open our about page. This section should drive that home. So if Amy's talking about that she loves to serve people by helping them create a business out of what they love. Well, she better prove in this section that she has a business that she loves. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, so that's, you know, and I think you do that very well, but let's say your business is all about giving people freedom by running an online business. Like that's your why is like, you want more freedom in the world. This is the better, the picture that you're painting. Well, then I want to see in this part of your bio that you're living a freedom filled life whatever that means, right? That could mean that you're traveling the world or, you know, that you have all of this free time to pursue a really fun side passion, you know, whatever that looks like. But this is where you need to drive that home and show people that you practice what you preach. Okay. So I have a question for you that might be a Mm -hmm. little tricky. So it's okay if you can't answer this one. But one thing I noticed that some of my clients do is they start to tell stories about themselves because this is, let's say the the time that they're going to bring in the personal But it's so indulgent that it almost loses me where when I look at yours, it's like you're telling your story, but I still feel like you're bringing it back to me somehow or another. And so is there this fine line or an art or a science to that where you're talking about you, but you're really making it about them? Yes, absolutely. So um, I kind of use a combo of two different things. So the first thing is anytime I write anything in my business, and this goes beyond about pages, this could be for other content and blogs, I always check myself multiple times through (laughs) that writing and say, is this really going to help somebody? Oh, I love that. Okay. Simple question. Simple question. (laughs) It sounds super easy, but I'm telling you, if you check yourself and get honest with yourself, you will eliminate a lot of things in your, in your content that don't need to be there. Right. Cause you're like, "Eh," you know, is this just like a brag or is this really, you know, helping someone? So I use a combo of that checking myself. And then the other thing is, I'm a little bit, and and I think that this helps, and if this isn't your natural personality, then please don't do this. But my natural personality is like, I'm a little bit self-deprecating, right? So I will like make fun, poke fun at myself. I love like revealing quirky things, things that people might Mm -hmm. be like, I can't believe she does that, you know? (laughs) That though really does help with my audience because they feel like, it's real, right? Like they're like, okay, well, that's great that you did this cool thing, but then you also didn't learn to ride a bike till you were 30 years old. (laughs) So it's kind of like, you know, so it's like, I have these cool things in my life, but then I'm humanizing myself again. So I try to counterbalance that with, you know, if I'm talking about something that maybe would be perceived as impressive, I also want to include something in there that's either like quirky or maybe weird or different Or maybe, you know, you could do something like this. So I'm a big fan of showing your brush strokes. I wrote like a whole blog post about that. And what that means is, is, what that means is don't hide your journey to where you got to today. Right. And I think it's unfortunate that so so many people do that. And I think they just do it because they think that they don't want to like show their mistakes. They're scared when in fact that's an opportunity for people to go, Oh gosh, thank you for sharing that because now I don't feel alone. So 
a way that you could weave that into this section is let's say you're uber, uber successful, right? And you're like a multimillionaire now and you travel the world, yada, yada. Well, maybe you include a line in there, you know, about how there were a lot of trials and tribulations that got you to this place, but it was through those stumbling blocks that you learned the biggest lessons. So maybe you just include like a small line like that, that makes people go, yeah, you know, thank you for saying that because now I know you're human and you had fumbles, but the fact that you look at your fumbles as like the best opportunity for success makes me feel better about myself. So that's a good like place of checking yourself and saying, okay, I'm going to talk about things that I'm doing that are impressive yet. I'm also going to make sure that my audience feels included in that. And that, you know, my goal is to help them get to the same place that I am and not hide my brushstrokes of how I got there. Does that make sense? It does. I love that. I'm going to link to that article for sure in the show notes and the article build a better bio. I think those two are fantastic. You have so many good articles on your blog. So I'm going to link to your blog in general, but I'm going to highlight those two articles for sure in the show notes. Now I have a question. I want to jump back to when you talked about skills and all that, Mm -hmm. but before I do that, did you go through all the sections of your about we page. have two more very quick sections. Okay, tell me those and then I'm going to jump minutes. back. Okay, great. <laughs> so, so the next section is actually super fun because it's called fun facts. Okay, <laughs> so, perfect. And it may seem frivolous, but this is actually the section that I guarantee you'll get the most people contacting you about. This is why I fell in love with you. You're fun. <laughs> Thank facts. you. Yes, this worked See? for me. Yeah. See, it works. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I get emails every single day about like, oh my God, you love erotic fiction. What's in your Kindle? <laughs> <laughs> like people will contact me because of this. So um, this is the section where it hits emotion, an emotional trigger with people, right? It gives them a real sense of what it's like to work with you, to play with you, like what's going on in your world behind the scenes. And it's really super appealing to your ideal customers, which is very important for everybody to know. We're not writing our bios for everybody. Our bios are intended to really turn on our ideal customers and they should be turning off the people that you don't work with. Ooh, so there's that's like good. Say it one more time. That's so good. Your bio or about page is only intended to turn on your ideal customers and it should be repelling the people that you want to turn off. Okay, that's good. Okay. So super important. So this is your section to have fun list, like 10 fun facts about you, five fun facts, whatever that is like little quirky things. And then finally, our, our last section is include some kind of clear action step. So I know we talked about this earlier with guest blogs and having like, if you're giving them a byline, you need some kind of clear action step for them to do at the end. I like to also include this in my bio because by the time they've read all the way to the end, if I've done it right, they're probably like, ah, I want to be in your world, right? Like, yes. I want to do something with you. So have some way that they can play with you, right? Like what's the next step? And so that might be to grab your opt-in gift. It could be to check out one of your products or services. It could be to contact you to set up a consultation whatever, right? Whatever your specific action step is, just give them something to do. So if they want to take, make that next move, tell them specifically what you want that next move to be rather than leaving them to their own devices. Because when you leave them to their own devices, then they're either going to click away or click around the site and then just eventually like flitter away and then they're gone. So be really specific with how they can work with you next or how they can be in your world next. Okay, perfect. Yep. And that's the final piece of it. That's it. Okay. So that actually reminds me, I have a few questions for you. So sure. you also have this great blog post. Um, what's the exact title? It's four things. I can't, I can't remember. It's four questions to help you identify what's not working in your business. Perfect. Yes. I will be definitely linking to that one as well, <laughs> but here's something you said. You said having millions of fans can be great. Getting on TV can be fun, but getting famous is not all it's cracked up to be. And getting featured in the media doesn't always lead to sales either. Now, I love how you word that because when it comes to sales, are we supposed to be selling on our about page? So in my opinion, no, (laughs) I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of like shoving a sales message down people's throats when they're just getting to know me. It doesn't feel like it's at the right phase for them to do that. However, 
in your call to action, which I mentioned, right, that is the place where you're telling them what next step you want to take. In my opinion, I think you should make that next step something about free content, right? Because we are all building the know, like, and trust factor online and especially online. There's a big difference doing business online than off. And it can be very hard to build that know, like, and trust with people when there's like this barrier of a computer and you're not like actually meeting. Mm -hmm. So I believe that you should be driving them to more valuable content. So whether that's like an opt-in or a free challenge or maybe, you know, a compilation or a library of your best blog posts, right, or best podcasts or whatever your content bank looks like, that's what I think you should do rather than saying, hey, let's work together right away. You know, hey, let's do that. The only exception would be for some consultants and coaches, their intake process is to actually give people like an appetizer sized portion of what it's like to work with them. So they might do like a 15 minute or a 30 minute free consult. If you have something like that, that could be fun to put there okay. because then you're just taking that next level of let's get to know each other, right? You're hopping on the phone or on Skype and getting to know them. Gotcha. So I find that works a lot better then linking them directly to purchase something, because at that point, they may just not be ready. Like they don't know you well enough. And they're like, e, I just read this awesome thing. And now, oh, you're trying to sell me something. Totally agree. <laughs> right? That's it's everything like a, I teach. So yes. I'm on the same page with you for sure. Awesome. Make it a great lead magnet is what I call it. So make it a great lead magnet that somehow relates to what you've just talked about inside that about page. So there's a good alignment there, but I think that's fantastic. And I personally love to use, um, this is not really a plug, but it's truly what I use. I like to use lead pages pop-up box. So there's like a link. So it might say click here and then they click and there's this pop-up box. So they don't have to go anywhere else. They could stay on that about page if they still want to keep reading, but there's some opportunity. And uh, Derek Helpern of Social Triggers, he was the very first person years ago that told me, you've got to add some opt-in or opt-in opportunities on your about page because he actually said that about page is one of the most frequented pages. And I mentioned this in my intro, but frequented pages on your website. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. I have a, a thing at the bottom of my about page that says, whoa, slam on the brakes, hot shot. The, <laughs> the, the ride, it's something like, Right, this ride is ending, but the fun's just beginning. And then I have like a link to my about pay. I mean, I'm sorry, my opt in. So Perfect. absolutely, I agree with that. Like, okay. I think it's really fun if you make that bottom part, that call to action, something about that. And I know other people will link to their welcome gift or their opt in like throughout. And I think that's okay too, you know, but just make sure that it's on there somewhere. Okay, perfect. Now, I did have another question about those bullets you were talking about inside the about page. And um, so let's say you're certified in some skills that don't really seem to have any connection to the product or service you're offering to your audience. How can you get across what those credentials mean in a way that connects uh, with your audience instead of confusing them? Sure. It's going to depend on what the credentials are. And in some cases, they're like so out there that they yeah. never connect. Okay, so maybe um, they don't sometimes. Yes. Okay. So what I normally do, um, and I work with like a lot of medical professionals, weirdly enough, <laughs> who have like these laundry list of credentials. What we normally do is we kind of like make a list. We just like make, like vomit them all over a page so that they're all there. And then we start to tick off. So, so first you would look at things that are nationally or internationally recognizable. So like if my client went to Harvard or Stanford, like um, super recognizable, right? So you want to make sure that you put that there. Yes. Then there's going to be things that are so like niche and just like the only people that would ever know are your peers. And so you have to think about those, like, what do they actually mean? Like, what does that accolade actually mean? And so I know we had an example that we used earlier where, you know, maybe there is a cool award that you want in your industry yes. that is like the Oscar or the Tony or the Emmy of your industry. If that's the case, that's how you describe it. Right. You would say, I, you know, I'm the uh, recipient of blah, blah, blah award, which is basically the Academy Award of my industry. Okay. Right. So that people understand what that is. And then 
frankly, there are just going to be some things that do not fit. And you have to put your, your brain into the mode of who that bio or about page is intended for. So your about page is always going to be intended for your ideal client. Your bio, not so much. Sometimes it's not. So, you know, when I have clients that go for book deals, like they're, you know, pitching agents or publishers, I have clients that are trying to get television spokesperson deals. If that's the case, remember that now your ideal client is no longer that normal picture that you've painted. Your ideal client is now the person that's going to sign you for that book deal or the, that producer that's going to put you on television. And if that's the case, just flip your mind into that. And then you need to adjust your bio accordingly for that audience, which may mean adding in some of those extra credentials. Okay, perfect. Now, how do you feel about putting images on the about page? Images of you and I don't know what else, but how do you feel about that? Yes, I love that. Okay, okay good. <laughs> I, I love that. Um, I have, so it really depends on how your website is set up. And a lot of people nowadays have their image in their header. Yep. So that every page you're clicking, you're seeing the images. If that's the case, you don't have, you don't really have to go overboard and put a bunch more images in your, you know, about page unless you want to. But if you absolutely have no images in your header or, you know, anything visible on that about page, absolutely have okay. some professional headshots done or, you know, professional lifestyle shots done and then put, you know, one or two on that page. That's really, really important with online business. People need to see you. Okay. How about, I remember seeing an about page. It wasn't too long ago. And the guy was talking about how he's always been an entrepreneur since he's been a little boy. And he started with lemonade stands and he's got a picture of him like five years old at his lemonade stand. What do you think of something like that? Yeah, that's cute. Okay. Um, you know, I think as long as you, I, I mean, I like that a lot and I've, I've seen that, I've seen some people do that really well. That's usually a design element. So if it's designed really well to where it's like this beautiful flow of a story, it can look great. I've also seen it gone very wrong <laughs> where people will list out too much of their background. Like it's like at age five, yes. I did this and then have a photo at age seven <laughs> I did this, and it's too much, right? It's too much. We have to like chop it down because you have to remember that people People are reading this and they don't have like four years to get through your bio. <laughs> so in that lemonade stand example, I mean, it could be really fun if he was like, I've been an entrepreneur since I was five, you know, and then have like a really funny picture of him selling at his lemonade stand. And then, you know, he can say, I've used all of that, you know, expertise up till today where I have like my own new lemonade stand, which is now my this, you know, whatever okay. is current business. Gotcha. Um, that could be really funny from a design standpoint. Right. And it's like, it's still, it's like a, it's a quick story. It's quick and fun and punchy yeah. as opposed to, you know, drawn listing out, out <laughs> yeah. your entire background. Okay. Good point. All right. So if it works, definitely put it in there, but I like the flow and the story type of things. Yes. Now, another thing I notice, especially on your website, you have, let's see, you have my story page, you have start here, and then I think you have the about page. Is that right? Or work with me. So my story, yep. start here and work with me. So would those all be considered like a version of the, of the about page? And do you think that they're needed, all needed for most brands is my question. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll give you my intention with those pages. Great. So, so my story is, is actually my about page. Okay. So great. I just call it my story. And the only reason I do that is because my people like that language. Mm -hmm. So, so some of that is just trial and error, like learning how your people like to talk to you. So I, you know, I don't really use the word about page, like in general conversation, I would just say, yeah, my story is. I think that's a <laughs> that's great how, point. You know, most of us have about on the top, like I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure I do. And it's so funny. I don't look at my website all that much, so I can't remember every element, which is a little bit weird. But anyway, I think we need to change that. I think that sounds super like clinical almost, or it's just like mm -hmm. an internal phrase. So I love that you change that. Okay. So your, my story is your about page. Yep. That's that. My start here page. That's actually a library of some of my best content. 
So for people that are brand, brand new to my site, Ooh, right? I love they, this. Yeah. They just land there and they're like, bah, what do I do? Right. There's so many things to click on and look at. I have that. So it's like start here. So, so immediately they'll go, okay, I got to start here. So then they go there and this is where I basically have like a compendium of all of my what I think is my best content based upon it's two things. It's like either what people have responded to the most, which my bio challenge is right at the top, which is what we <laughs> were doing this whole thing on. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then other things that give them a sense of my brand. So I talk a lot about like addiction and obsession when it comes to business. I do a lot of edutainment, meaning like merging, you know, entertainment with educational things for my audience. So I make sure that I include that there. So they get a really clear picture of what that's like. And I also do link on that page to my work with me page. The reason that I do that is not because I'm trying to sell them right away but because I want them to know that there are opportunities to work with me, right? There are opportunities there. So I have like an actual business. And I did that because I find, especially in my community, that people get very confused between just having a blog and actually being a business. So I do that because I don't want to be viewed as a quote unquote blogger because that's not what I am. I'm a business owner and I blog to promote my business. So that's why I have that there. Every audience is different though. So I don't think everyone needs to have that. But if you tune into your audience, you'll kind of learn if that's going on for you. So if people are like, are you just a blogger? Like, do you have a business? If you're getting that question, you want to actually make it a little more prominent that you're a business owner and that there are ways that they can actually pay to work with you. Ooh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> just kind of dialing into your audience and then my work with me page, you know, that's kind of, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just, <laughs> this is the ways that you can work with me. So I give them, you know, right off the bat, a couple of reasons that they should work with me, right? Like a couple of reasons that, that I'm a cool chick that you can work with. And then if they're ready to rock and roll, I give them their options. Now for me, I only have two options. One is only open once a year, just like, you know, a B school model where I have like one program that opens once a year. And the other one is just a self-study class that is always available for purchase. So that's my business model. Everyone will have a different section for this and also a different intake. So some people, you know, it's like you can buy right away. Some people has a waiting list. Some people have an intake form where it's like, you can't just work with me. You have to fill out an application and I self-select from that. So again, gotcha. that's going to depend on the person. Yep. T tell us real quick. I do have one more question after this, but tell us real quick. So you've got the program that's open once a year. What is that program called? Obsessed. Okay. And what's that one about? <laughs> I love your names. Uh, so um, that's a year long training program that helps you to build an audience that's totally and entirely obsessed with you. And why that's important is because it reduces the time that you need to market and sell your products. And it's based upon building a really engaged audience. So I believe that size doesn't matter. It's really about the level of engagement. So if you have really high engagement in your community, then you can sell things like hotcakes. Yes. So I teach people and train people how to do that through the program. Okay. And then the self-study? Self-study is the swirl effect. So that's for people that are multi-passionate. So like oh, myself. Oh, that's perfect for my next question. Okay. Oh, tell me beautiful. about that. Okay. Beautiful. So a swirl effect is for people that have like millions of different interests yes. <laughs> and a billion different business ideas, but they have no consistent message, right? They're like all over the freaking place. Okay. And, um, and so that's just based upon my own life, really being an, I used to be an actress slash business owner. Um, and now I'm a screenwriter slash actress slash business owner. So it's, you know, the slashes just keep growing. So, um, so it's really about, you know, how do you communicate that to your audience without completely confusing them and turning them off? Okay. So that kind of leads me to the next question. And that was, so you're obviously a versatile kind of girl and you have a lot of talents and a lot of interest and I know this comes back to the whole swirl concept, but how in the world do you narrow down what you should be focusing on your business 
and then treat the other things like your hobbies and your things that you love, but aren't necessarily brought into what you're doing in business. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So that's, it's interesting because that's the whole entire swirl effect class. Okay. So if that's you, if if you're listening, you need swirl because I feel like this is, this is not my problem because I always tease. I'm not incredibly creative with a million ideas. I think that's how I get so much done because I don't have a lot of ideas, but Mm -hmm. many of my friends and entrepreneurs, they are the creative types with so many ideas swirling in their head, swirling that would just happen. So Mm -hmm. I guess that's a perfect name for the product. (laughs) Um, and, and they struggle with this. And then I feel like those are the friends of mine that do not have focus. They really struggle mm-hmm. with focus. So tell me a little bit more about that. It's true. So so a lot of this is is like a testing process. So if anyone's ever gone through The Desire Map by Daniel Laporte, yes. where it's like where the entire book is like you're just sort of whittling down and whittling down until you find your core desired feelings. Yes. This is very similar nice. in tone, I would okay. say. Where, you know, the methodology is that you're kind of like you're listing out like all of these things that you want to do. So you have like a bajillion ideas and passions and things and, you know, you want to do this and that. And then it's really about whittling them down to what's actually just like a side hobby. What's an actual passion? What do you actually want to make a business and make money from? Right. And those are completely different things. Because like an example might be, maybe you say, oh my gosh, I love riding horses. Like I want to be a professional jockey. You know, <laughs> like that's in your, in your brain, right? Because you're kind of fantasizing that this is going to be a thing. And I actually did this with sewing and, and like, I thought I was going to be on Project Runway and I had all of these fantasies. And then I got a sewing machine and I sewed one skirt inside <laughs> out and it was horrible. And I hated every last <laughs> second of it. And I was like, I was so angry and hostile. And then, you know, and I'm like, okay, this is not for me, but the only way I knew that is because I tried it. Right. So a lot of this is like testing and trying and learning if you love the journey. Now that doesn't mean you're going to love every second of your journey. I do think there's hard work and I do think that there's ups and downs with anything that you do, but you have an inkling when you're actually going through something, whether you enjoy the journey or whether you completely despise the journey. And you often don't know that until you actually give it a shot. So, um, I usually take people through a process where it's like, okay, if you have all these things maybe on your bucket list that you want to try or, you know, things like this, well, how about picking one at a time, giving it a bit of a shot for a couple months and all you're looking at, you're not looking at end result or expectations or like some kind of huge win. You're just looking to see if you can tolerate or find joy in the journey. And if you can, that's a good inkling that that needs to go in your little swirl. And if you hate every last second, like I did with sewing, (laughs) bye-bye, right? That means it was just a fantasy. And through that process, we often find that a lot of things that we think we're going to love, are really just fantasies. There's things that we painted in our mind or we're looking at like somebody's end and comparing it to our beginning, right? So we're looking at like, you know, a really famous actor. We're looking at somebody who's super successful in online marketing and going, I want to be that. But then when you actually realize the journey and the work that it takes to get there, then you might be like, oh, not for me. (laughs) Yeah, not for me. Um, So yeah, so it is a lot of like a testing process and whittling down, but it's really, really fun. And also to me, I like it because it's experimental. So you can try a bunch of different things and just and have fun with it and really learn what you love and what you don't and then end up with your kind of core swirl. So for all my multi-passionate entrepreneurs out there that I often envy because you have a million ideas and you get excited about so much definitely I want you to at least check out this self-study program because I think it would be really valuable. Plus, one thing I love about Melissa is she infuses fun in everything she does. I'm pretty sure you can't create anything without having fun. Would you agree? Oh, agree. <laughs> that's so you. <laughs> if it's not pleasurable, I don't do it. <laughs> it's out. So that's awesome. Well, I cannot thank you enough for being on the show. I really wanted it to be like a mini training all about the about page. I think definitely we nailed that. And with your Mad Libs template to create the about page, that's going to be really valuable. Uh, Will you tell everybody where they can find out more about you? 
Sure. Uh, you can come to my website, which is melissacasera.com. I'm sure Amy will have 8 million links to it. You know, <laughs> it's a good amazing. show when you have tons of links and I have a big long list of everything I want to link, all your articles, <laughs> your products and your about page for sure. And so I'll definitely put that all in the show notes. Cool. Yeah. Come and play with me over there. I also have a free ebook that's about like 75 pages, but it's super juicy yeah. and has lots of things that build upon what we talked about today. So if you want oh, cool. additional help and advice beyond our conversation, definitely grab that. And that's on your website? It is right on my website. Okay, it is perfect. everywhere. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> it did, just like it should be. That's awesome. Oh yeah. So thank you so very much. And I'm really glad we got the opportunity to chat. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Take care. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Melissa as much as I enjoyed actually sitting here talking about the about page, breaking it all down and learning some new stuff. You can be sure to see a new about page from me in the next month or so because I'm going to be tweaking mine. I think about pages can be so much fun. You can put so much personality into them. It's just sitting down and figuring out, okay, what do I want to include? How do I want to do it? And I think the free PDF for this episode is going to help you do just that. So if you want that Mad Lib style about page template, all you need to do is go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 65 download, or you can download the phrase 65 download to the number 33444. Thank you so very much for being here. I can't wait to join you again next week. Next week, we're going to reevaluate the business. We're going to see where you are right now and some tweaks that we might want to make so that the rest of your year goes a whole lot smoother. So we're reworking some stuff, reevaluating, and I'm going to take you through an exercise I just did in my own business to help you do the same. So I will see you next week. Until then, make it a great week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com.